Hello, I'm Zardis. Sit back, grab some coffee, and relapse as we build in RimWorld. Today, we are going to do an ultimate beginner's guide of how to start in RimWorld. If you're new to the game, this will be a great resource for you. And uh, yeah, so what you want to do when you start is you want to go to New Colony. And then uh, keep in mind, RimWorld is a story-based city survival colony base builder type thing. Okay, I combined a whole bunch of words there. But what you need to know is that you're going to try to survive. You're going to have a group of people. It's going to give you events that happen that you have to navigate through. And so with that in mind, you want to pick a scenario in the beginning. Crash landed is normal rim world we're gonna do that one but i'll talk through some of the other ones um lost tribe you start with five people rich explorer you start with one person and a whole bunch of money and stuff like that naked brutality you start naked nothing else no thing you get one person and you have to survive that is really hard so uh what we're gonna do is crash landed so we start with three people and then we get money and some basic things that we need to get started. There is a massive Steam Workshop for this game. You can go in there and get a whole bunch of custom stuff. We're gonna do base RimWorld, no DLCs. We're really just showing what we do at the beginning. Then you go to next and then you get an AI storyteller. So this gives you different events and you have three of them. There's Cassandra Classic, which just kind of gives you a classic story it increases tension as you go along she'll give you like it's as dangerous events and then give you some uh, breathable room and come back with more later then there's phoebe chill apps she gives a lot of time to build in between the disasters but they can be really hard if you choose a hard difficulty and then there's randy random who really it doesn't matter how much time we're like there's there's no idea how much time there will be it is very random so we're going to go ahead with cassandra classic it is going to get harder as we go but we are going to do these are the different difficulty levels you can start at peaceful this is the very beginning stage there's community builder if you're new to the game uh and you want to just focus on building but you have some experience with games like this that's the one to do adventure story you might be experienced with strategy games, but this is your first time playing RimWorld. And Strive to Survive, this is where you start to see more difficulty. It's getting harder and harder. And so what we're going to do is we will go ahead and do Adventure Story. Well, no, I want to do Community Builder because I'm a, a city builder. I focus on city building. And so we're going to do that. It's not going to be very hard. You can change the difficulty at any time. Uh, and then I'm going to do reload any time mode. That is typically what I do. If you're a fan of like uh, Crusader Kings or uh, Europa Universalis 4, EU4, then commitment mode is one where you can't reload. It's kind of like Iron Man mode in those games, but we will do reload anytime. So then we can randomize our map. This is generating a whole new world, not just our map. And so you can type in any word you want, like Zardus will go with that one. And whatever map comes up will be, I should, if you type in Zardus, it should be the same map. If we keep all of these things at the same, then we want to go ahead and we are going to go with Oh, whoop, no, I didn't want to delete it. I want to keep that. So it has all of these in here, all of these uh, types of factions in here. Some of them like the Savage Tribe. And I think any of these tribes, they will auto, auto, like always be, um, be mean to you, I think. Some of them will always be mean and others will not. You can read about them as you want. I'm not going to worry too much about them. We can now hit generate. It is generating the world. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is pick where we want to settle. And there are different biomes. You can see if you click here, you get temperate forest. And if this is not coming up right away, you can click uh, not view information, you can click on terrain and that brings up more details about the terrain. You can click on boreal forest or a desert or over here you get temperate forest but it has impassable terrain. 
and so on and so forth. There's also a tropical rainforest. And if you go to train, you can see what you will get. You get lots and lots of dangers at um, animals there. I'm going to go with the temperate forest because that is pretty much vanilla or like really easy. But I'm also going to come and I want to be on a river. I don't want a big river. In fact, a creek might be fine. If we go farther back, you get to a creek, it's smaller. But the thing is that a creek will have running water. So once we unlock um, windmills, or not windmills, water mills, then we can have that for electricity. I do like that. The other thing you can do is you could go to a road that makes it so that people come and visit you a little bit more often. You can see the movement difficulty is changing. And if you go to, I think there are some really big roads here, Stone Road, Stone Road, somewhere. Sometimes there are like super big roads, I think. But anyway, you can do those. I'm going to look around a little bit. I think I want something like this. Small hills, although this is very close, but it's a very hostile faction. I don't want to be too close to them. So yeah, I'm going to look around a bit. Okay, I think I found where I want to be. I'm over on the west coast and I found a spot that is temperate forest with small hills and a river. So the small hills will give us more uh, stone to mine and the river will give us an opportunity to have some uh, water mills. Movement difficulty is 1.5, so we won't get a ton of people coming through, but we are close to this spot, which is neutral, and then this one is neutral as well. So that might be a good spot here. And the other thing is the growing period is from pretty much the first of spring until the middle of fall. And so that will be pretty good. Rainfall isn't too bad. There's berries that are forageable and uh, animals can graze there. So we're going to go ahead and click next. Now you get to the key part of starting your RimWorld story, which is the characters that you start with. And basically what we want to do, I always want to have someone who's really good at shooting or who has a double passion for shooting. So like Victoria here has a good start as somebody who might be good. So let's look at the traits that she has. She is a jogger, so she can move faster and she's nimble. So she can do a little bit of good dodging when uh, in a melee fight. She's incapable of caring, so she can't do any medical work. She can't do any artistry and she can't plant or grow things. So we may or may not want her, but I'm going to keep her in here because of that double shooting. We'll see if any of these others have that. No, but we can randomize, which will respawn some of them. I do want, okay, so going back. So I said, I want a double passion, which is two flames. That means that they, as they are working on the skill, they will grow that skill faster than anybody else. You can see that the learning speed is 150% because it is a burning passion. It has two flames there. One flame means it is a passion and it can grow at 50%, we're at 100% there. If it doesn't have a passion, then it grows at 35%. So you want the passions because they can grow those skills really quickly. They're, that's even more important than the number of points that they have for the skill. So what I want is I want somebody with a burning passion in shooting, a burning passion in cooking, and I really like a burning passion in medical because then we can get a good doctor right away. We can get a good uh, defensive person or hunter and a good cook right away. Those three things I like to think of as the most important. I'd also like to have somebody with a pretty good score in construction. So now I'm going to go in and like I said, you can go in here. This one, I don't like this one because it doesn't have the shooting, the cooking or the medical as a burning passion. And I'm going to do this and just go and randomize. So now it gave me another person who does have that burning passion in cooking and a really good score in construction. Hector might be a great person. Let's take a look. They're a misogynist. That could be a problem, especially if we stick with Vicky. So I'm going to say no, especially because they're also a psychopath. So we're going to just go ahead and randomize until we get another uh, cooking or medical burning passion. Okay, here we have a medical, but also a, bi a, a psychopath again. 
Uh, let's see here. That no empathy. Doesn't mind if others are butchered. Okay, that actually won't impact us too much. Bisexual also won't matter to us. Um, sickly child, though, could be a pro. I mean, that actually doesn't impact. That just boosts the medical. So, Bakari may be a good one. That's another female. So now we have medical and shooting. So now we just need a cook. Okay, so here, oh, this one is sickly currently, which gives medical plus four, but awful immune system. I'm gonna skip that and just see, do we have any others in here? We do. So Myla is an aromatherapist. She's very neurotic though, which just means that global work speed goes up, but also mental break threshold is a little bit higher. So mental breaks are, if, if her needs are not being met, she might have a mental break and she might go around like yelling at people or something. That is something we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, ascetic means that she wants a really good, uh, or like a really bad bedroom. So that is actually a good trait because that means we don't have to deal too much with her bedroom. And okay, actually, I think she's really good. Plants, she's a good gardener too. So. Yeah, we're gonna move her up. So we left click and just drag up to the top. So let's take a look down here. We can see the team skills. This would be the highest point that we have in each category. We actually are pretty good. And we've got a burning passion in shooting, in mining, cooking, and medical. And then we've got passions in everything else. So I'm very happy with these characters. We're gonna go ahead and hit start. Okay, and now we have loaded onto the map and we have just awoken from a crash on the Rimworld planet. So we are out in the outer reaches of the galaxy or the outer reaches of our uh, uh, space-faring society. And we are in on a Rim planet and there's pieces of stuff around us. We're gonna let them crash down and then stuff will fall out. Okay, so I've hit spacebar to pause, and what we're going to do right away is actually zoom out, and you see all of these things have an X on them. That means that our people will not use them at all. We just wanna come in right away and highlight all of it, clicking into our, uh, here. What we want to do actually is if you right click, it brings up the architect menu, then we go to orders, and we want to go ahead and go all the way to allow here and we want to click and drag now. So everything that was in there with an Eps now has no Eps. And so now they'll use that. But the problem is it's outside. And so a lot of these things like the medicine and the packaged survival meals, they will deteriorate outside. Other things like the granite chunk or the steel or the, the wood, that stuff won't deteriorate as fast. We don't have to worry about that being outside, but we do need to get a shelter for some of this other stuff to go in. The other thing we wanna do is I wanna look up here and see, okay, which one of these was the shooter? Vicky is the shooter and we come, we get a bolt action rifle. So we're going to right click on it and tell Vicky to equip that right away. Myla, doesn't have any good skills with that. Uh, Bakari has some shooting skills, so we will give her a revolver. And then Myla can go over and just have the knife. And the other thing I'm going to do is right click and then drag Bakari over. So I like to do that so that I know these two are the ones that have the guns. So if we have to do something where we need to be shooting, we can get, get them working on that right away. Now, the next thing I wanna do is start thinking about a shelter. And what we can do, our initial shelter, we already have some walls right by us. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Now we have compacted steel right here too. So we're gonna have a really good set of steel there. I'm going to go down to the corner and hit toggle visibility of roofs. We don't have any roofs really at all. These green spots on the rock mean that it, it's like a higher rock and if you dig under it that could collapse on you. So the first thing you need to do before mining would be to go to uh, the orders and then you want zone and remove roof area by going like that. But we're not going to worry about that. Uh, it will now go ahead and I gave them that order. 
but I wanted to double check that we will be able to mine in here. So what I want to do now is go to structure and we're going to just build a wood wall and just kind of close this in a bit. So we can get a wall there, a wall there, and a wall there. That is really easy. We can get a really tiny little space in here without much difficulty, but we do need wood. It's gonna use that wood, but we'll go ahead and give an order to chop wood down over here. And so we've got our orders set. The next thing I wanna do is go to work and notice we're still paused. We haven't done anything yet, but I'm gonna to go to work and I want to change this to manual priorities. And this is going to give our workers different priorities for what they do. And they always work from left to right. So if there's firefighting and if these all have the same point or the same priority level, which they do, then they'll do firefighting first. Then they'll go to patient and they will, patient means that they will go to medical bed if they are in a medical issue. Doctor means they will go help whoever is in the medical bed. We do have a problem here. Oh, okay. Well, actually, we don't. Vicky can't do any medical or any doctor stuff, which is fine. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and left click and get all of these to one because I want them to do doctoring if they can. Uh, I'd rather have Bakari do it than Myla. So I'm going to right click and put that at two for her just because then Bakari is more likely to be the first one to get there. And I'll go all the way to basic. Basic is stuff like if I tell them to turn on, say a generator or something, if it's set to one, then right away somebody will go and do that because, and you pretty much want that to be at a one because you want that to happen pretty quickly when you give them that order. Wardening means if they go and they talk to the prisoners, uh, typically if you highlight it, it will, or if you go here, it will tell you the relevant skill. And so you want the person with the most social. You can click on here and it will sort by the relevant skill. So Vicky has the most there. I'm gonna go ahead and let her be a, the warden. So I'm going to set it to two, just so that I can keep a, an eye on that handle I'm gonna come in here and uh, actually what I want to do what I what I like to do now that I'm thinking of it a little bit more is I like to look at these and if they have the double passion I'm gonna set that anything with that skill to a number two so Myla is going to be the cook so we want Myla to have a two for cooking and I think that's the only one that has cooking as the relevant skill yeah, so then let's go to Bakari. Bakari is mining and medical. So Bakari is already at one for doctor and we will get mining at a number two as well. And then she probably has really good research skills. Researching is pretty important here at the beginning. So I'm going to, and actually it's pretty important a lot, but we're gonna go ahead and set that to two. And then Vicky is good at shooting and crafting. So those are going to be her main things. Who is the best at construction? Okay, Vicky is our construction person too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit two for that because construction is very important too. And did it say that she's the, no, not mining, crafting. Okay, so she is going to get tailoring, crafting, and that's it. We'll keep that there. Bakari has the high priority there. Okay, so this should be pretty good. The person with the gun is Vicky. So Vicky is going to be our hunter. And Bakari has a gun as well. We can have her do some hunting periodically. And, but we really want Vicky to do all the construction if we can. But we have somebody on everything, and so that should be that. Then the next thing I wanna do is change their schedule. I like to have this be a little bit realistic and let them have a little bit of recreation. I'm going to click recreation here and just go like that. Give them recreation in the evening, that makes them happier. Copy and paste that to the others. So that is the things we need to worry about. And now we have some assignments here. We're going to start doing that. And then the other thing I want to do is we want to come in here. And we're going to give them beds right away. And 
unfortunately this is not a very big area so I'm also I'm going to give an order to mine these impassable mineable rocks oh these are walls okay yeah we're going to go ahead and deconstruct those and then the mining is going to be here which we are going to need to build another wall over here after we take that out and that'll just give us a little bit of a bigger area and then we'll mine that spot too and that'll be our starting thing and then we can get some other stuff started we're going to get some beds in there but we're going to let them do this first okay so they've gotten some mining done so we have a little bit more space in there i wanted to get this piece mined in particular so that we can come in here and say okay put a bed a bed and a bed we'll have three beds in here and then the other thing we want to do right away is i want to go to zone and just put a stockpile right in here just to bring some of the stuff in that can't be outside. I'm going to go to storage though, and I'm going to tell it I don't want anything raw in there. So like none of the steel should come in here, no wood, uh, nothing like that should come in, but other stuff can. I also don't want any chunks, okay. Yeah, all of that should be fine. Now they're starting to bring things inside. Vicky has pretty much finished the roof here and now this is going to be an inside building although it still says unroofed but it it should be good at some point now i also we have a flak vest which will is armor and then there's a little bit more there i'm going to go ahead and give that to myla because if you remember myla is the one that we gave the knife to so she's the one who's most likely to do melee combat so i'm going to go ahead and tell her to wear the flak vest, the flak pants, and the helmet. So if she gets in a melee fight, she is going to be well prepared for any fighting. And that is going to make it so that she is forced to wear it. She won't take it off at any point. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Normally they will get dressed in whatever clothes are available that you have allowed them to wear through a sign. We'll talk about that more in detail later. And you can see we've got a turkey in here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this as hunt, but although we don't have anything to put the meat in yet. So we're not gonna do that yet. The turkey can kind of walk around. The dog is actually our pet. And I mean, it's not gonna be a big deal, but so, I mean, we can have them walk around, and eventually they could be trained to help haul things. The, the the dog can. Sometimes you get a pet that isn't very useful. The dog is kind of medium usefulness. But that, actually, this is still saying unroofed. Why are we, oh, you know why? Because we had put in here as remove roof area. So I want a roof here, like that. So Vicky will go ahead and put a roof there. And now this is indoors, so all of this is in better shape. We actually could get a bigger stockpile because we've got some stuff that doesn't fit in here. And we've got, yeah, marble blocks. Those were from deconstructing. So now we are set for the first day. We should be able to um, be in good shape because we've got stuff lasting. But the first thing we want to do is we want to start getting some food produced. So I want to go to fertility and if you zoom out you can see the fertility overlay so i went down here to fertility overlay in the bottom right and the dark green is where things are most fertile regular green is i mean regular fertility we actually we don't have any great spots for fertility so i don't think it's gonna matter too much where we put stuff i think let's take a look as well at the general map and we have and some hills around here. Eventually, I think we're probably going to get like a wall along here, maybe up along here and across, and then down or something, where maybe we'll stay on the side of the river. But we do at some point want to get a wall in place to keep us well defended. But for now, it's not a big deal. I think what we'll do then, going back to fertility, I think what we want is this area to be our farm and this is going to be more of our our building it's kind of what i'm thinking yeah 
So we're going to come in here and the first thing we're going to grow, we're going to right click and we'll go to zone and we want to get a growing area. We don't need it too big. I'm just going to go, uh, let's go ahead and do about a hundred. And we want to grow rice because rice will grow the fastest and give us the, the most impact for anything. But we can go and get another thing, another about a hundred. And that one we are going to do, uh, I think we'll do, if we can do heal root. Do we have anybody with eight, um, eight skill for growing? Yeah, Myla can do Heal Root. So Heal Root will give us more medicine. And if we go up here and go to medicine, we only have 30 medicine right now. So we want to get some natural medicine as well. And uh, if you don't have this view, what you can do is go down here to the bottom right and you want to toggle the categorize mode. And that just clears that up a little bit and makes it a little bit more manageable. But so now Myla, I think is our grower, will come up here and start getting things growing. Then the next thing we need is a refrigerator. And for a refrigerator, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. One, you need power so that you can have a cooler. And two, you want to make sure that it is fireproof because a fire might start and it would burn up all of your food and that would be really bad. So there's two things you really need to have fireproof your general stockpile. So we're going to eventually have a storage room and we want that to be fireproof and your refrigerator. Those are the two biggest things. I think I'm going to put the refrigerator over in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to come in here to orders. We're going to order them to mine out, say like this. Yeah. And once they're done with that, we're going to have a bunch of marble and we're going to build marble walls around it. So actually what we could, although what we need to do first, we have to turn that those, uh, the raw marble into stone. So we're going to do a stone cutters table and we'll put that, uh, it probably should be inside because that will help them a little bit you get a penalty for doing things outside. So we'll go ahead and put that inside. It's gonna be a busy, uh, or like crowded room to begin with, but this is gonna work fine. So now that is built, we wanna click on it and go to bills and we want to make marble blocks because we're getting a lot of marble right here. And I'm going to go to details and say, do this until you have a hundred blocks. We're about, we'll just go with 110 and then pause and resume when you're down to 25 and then say, okay. So now somebody, probably our crafter, I believe. Yep, make stone blocks. Vicky, when she has a chance, is going to turn that marble into stone blocks. And right now we have, uh, it doesn't actually say because it's not in our stockpile, but we have, a little bit of stone blocks. And now she made more as well. So they're going to do that and that's going to get us some marble in here. We do wanna double check again that there's no roof in here that we have to worry about. So that should all be fine. We found some more steel here, which is good. When we mine in there, it'll be a helpful thing. We're getting close to our first day being over. So they're going to go to bed pretty soon and then in the morning they will get working some more. But we can go to Stretcher. If we click on here, we can change it to a marble wall. And I think what I wanna do is the, so another thing to keep in mind is with your refrigerator, if you have a double wall, so if we build here like this, this is a double wall and that will be more insulated. So that will help our refrigerator keep things even cooler but I'm going to come over here and for now we'll just do a single wall because that's gonna take a lot of marble and I'm not quite sure that we have enough, but we also can come over here and we're going to get over here and double click and we want to click to haul that. So they all have an order to haul that. And what I wanna do is I want them to put them in a stockpile, uh, a dumping zone. So all of the, the 
stone chunks like that can just be dumped, say, right here. So they'll haul stuff over here, and then Vicky can bring it into the stone cutting area and cut it into stone. But now Vicky is working on building here. Hopefully she got some good rest. She did. She must have gone to sleep. And then we'll get that wall in place. We can go ahead and go back to structure and put a door in here. We'll put that right here. And that can just be a wooden door and that will get us into there and then we'll figure out power next. So one thing I forgot to mention, you can see they say they need re uh, recreation variety. We haven't built anything re for recreation yet. F we're gonna just start with a horseshoe pin because that one is the easiest. They can get some outdoor recreation and just do that in the evenings or something. So this turkey has not left the uh, room here and I think it, it is going to then have issues with its uh, food, which we can't see anything. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to tame. So whoever is our handler, uh, Myla is going to go in and at some point try and tame the turkey, which then should get the turkey to be able to leave. I don't wanna kill it inside here because then it, the blood will get in there and then I'm not really sure that they will move the thing out. But uh, Vicky is almost done building our walls here. And I think I'm actually ready to give it a little bit more. We're gonna go ahead and give it the double wall here because we've got the space. So we're gonna come around like this and I'm actually going to put another door here which is going to give us a little airlock in here. And we're going to get the cooler or like the, actually, yeah, let's cancel this one. And then what I wanna do is I want to go to power, uh, actually temperature first. We're gonna put a cooler and you can see there's red and blue. Blue means that that is the cool side. So we want this here. So anything, it's going to take the hot air and make it cold and put, make it cold in here. But of course we need electricity. And so for electricity, we wanna to go to power. And for now, we will go ahead and get a wind turbine. And we're gonna slow down because we've got visitors here that we can talk about as well. And I'm going to put the wind turbine right over here. And yeah, we'll put that there. That'll get built, and then we want to make sure we clear any trees, which there aren't any trees there, so that'll be good. And then we need a power conduit, and we're going to bring the power conduit over like this. And then we're going to, oh, we don't have any batteries yet. So this will be fine, but eventually I want to put some batteries there, but we need to get a research table first. So for now, we're going to get this going. And we want to see this visitors so we have a group from the compact of Atta coming and if we go here they're not going to do anything oh they do have some stuff to trade so you can see they have got a question mark that means they will they are willing to trade with us and we want to send our best social person which is actually vicky who doesn't have a very good social skill we do not have good social skills in our group right now but if we go here we can go to trade and Vicky will go over and try to trade. The better your social score, the better the price you are going to get because you're better at haggling a price. But let's see what they have. We have a little bit of silver. Actually, we haven't collected any of it, so we can't buy anything right now. There isn't really anything we want to buy at this point anyway. And we don't want to sell, so we're done with that. So that's all there is to that. So the visitors did leave and they gave us a cloth veil and a bird skin t-shirt. So that was nice of them. We don't really need it too much right now because I think we're fully clothed. And I mean, the veil might help Myla, but she also, she already has the helmet. And I'm not sure the veil might make it so that she can't wear the helmet. We'll go ahead and put the veil on Vicky. Where is the gift? Okay, so they left it down here. We're gonna right click and put force uh, wear cloth veil. And then the bird skin t-shirt, it is going to help a little bit, but I think, what are we wearing? 
So Vicky has a f the flag. Why is Vicky wearing the flag vest? I told Myla to do that. Oh well, what? Uh, not not a huge deal. I guess Vicky, I do want you to drop it, so we can have them drop it like that. Ah uh, yes, because we can't queue up orders. They can only do one thing at a time. And then I want you to wear the cloth veil. Of course, now she's doing it in the middle of the night. Myla, you're, I'm going to force you to wake up too and go and get that. And then Bakari must be wearing the flak pants. You're going to drop those pants and then wear those pants. Myla, go put the vest on and then put the flak pants on as well. Okay. Now everybody should be fine. Now, the cooler is done being built, so we're going to click on it, and you can see down here it has the target temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you have it set to Celsius, you can see the temperature there. We want to get that down to below freezing, so we want to get this down to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the target temperature. It doesn't have to be that low, but anything below freezing will help your food stay good. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we're also going to do zone stockpile zone we're just going to do this whole thing and i want to click on storage i want to clear all and we're only going to put food there so only food is going to go in this stockpile and they're going to go ahead and start getting this ready this is now built so we should soon have power this is not getting the power actually it is so we have power this should start working Oh, power needed is 200. This is generating not enough. There we go. So now this is working and getting the temperature you can see in the bottom right here. The temperature is going down because the cooler is working. We're not getting too much power yet. The wind is going to fluctuate. So we want to get batteries as soon as we can. And we'll get this wall in as well, which will help this whole area. And now we've got another event. So we've got a mad hare this hair, there's just one of them, is going to attack anything it sees. So we're going to go ahead and highlight everybody. We're going to go to draft, which gives us direct control of them. And then we're going to hit attack and then click on the hair. So everybody should be going to attack the hair. Here's Myla. Myla is doing some work on the hair already. And we want to, actually, we, we can leave the hair as not anybody allowing. We're like, nobody's going to do anything. We're going to write, we're, uh, I highlighted all of them and did undraft. So they go back to whatever they were doing. And Myla now has some health issues. She has a bite from the hair. She's in no immediate danger from the bleeding. So it's not too bad, but she can, uh, actually, we, we want to make sure that Bakari actually can self-tend because Bakari is the one who has the best score for medical. But Bakari might tend Myla to help her stop bleeding. But in the meantime, that is where we're at. So Myla went to lay down because she is set to have bed rest, which is she go where a patient goes to medical bill or uh, resting in bed when you're sick, those sort of things. They go to lay down when they need medical treatment. Bakari went over and gave her some medicine. So now if we click on Myla and go here, you can see she's been bandaged up and she's no longer bleeding. So she will get better very quickly now. And now Bakari is feeding her as well. So then again, Vicky is working on making some marble blobs and she will get this wall built up. So right now, they're not moving the meals from this stockpile over here. So we want to click on here and we want to say no foods can be in this stockpile because it is not refrigerated. So we that will force them to haul the food over into the refrigerator, which right now it counts as a refrigerator, not a freezer because it is at 40 degrees. So it can slow the deterioration, but not stop it completely. The other issue we're going to have right now is we are down to 18 survival meals. So we are going to need to get some meals going. Our rice is growing. So we're going to get food from that. But 
we can also go to animals and wildlife and we can tell them to start hunting and of course i think we will start with this one the turkey in here so i believe it's vicky or oh akari is doing it right away and poor myla got tired or was trying to sleep and then of course vicky came in and started shooting this turkey which the turkey now died on Milo's bed so one thing we want to do is we want to go and go to architect and we want uh, production we're going to go ahead and I just want a butcher's spot which will be where they butcher the the turkey and we can go in here and go to bills add a bill butcher creature and we're going to do this forever so anytime there is an allowable creature to be butchered, they will do that. And then that meat is going to go in the freezer. So somebody will come in here and butcher that turkey, I hope. Yep, here comes Myla, putting it here, butchering the turkey and putting the turkey there. So now we've got some meat in here. It is refrigerated. It will last a little bit longer and soon hopefully it gets to be freezing. But that is it for today. We got through the first day or the first few days and we got the really basic stuff started and uh, we'll have more videos showing you how to get this colony going. If you uh, click on the video on the screen now, it will take you to the next one if it's out. If not, be sure to hit the subscribe button and stick around on the channel. Thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Take care.